and welcome to the second part of my The Guards Counter-Attack playthrough. In the first part of the video I talked mostly about the rules, about setting up and all the basic stuff uh, of Advanced Squad Leader. And to, today I am going to start regular gameplay of this amazing scenario. So we have a setup. I told you everything about setup in the previous video, so we can return right to the game. We are starting with turn one, and in the and uh, we know that Russian moves first. So let's place the turn marker on the Russian side, and now we have to go through all these phases: rally phase, prep fire phase, movement phase, defensive fire phase. Advancing fire phase, road phase, advance phase, and close combat phase for the Russians. Next, we have to go throughout the, all these phases for Germans, and then we can go to the turn two. All right. First thing first. At the beginning of the game of the turn, in the rally phase, we have to make a roll for the possible wind change. The special scenario rule says no wind at start, so we have no wind. But if I get two. This means snake eyes, as people call it, because it looks like that. Then the wind might start to blow. Let's make a roll. It is four, so no wind at all. Okay, so the first phase is rally phase. We don't have much to do in the rally phase at the beginning of the game, because rally phase, well, it is mostly about rallying your broken troops, repairing your broken weapons and nothing like that at the beginning of the game. So what we can do? First, uh, we can uh, <coughs> recover, recover unpossessed weapon. For example, if uh, there is a unit on the, <coughs> on the same hex with a weapon that no one owns, <coughs> it might try to take it. It has to make a roll and it, if if the roll is uh, not 6, then it can take this weapon. No matter if it's, if it's own weapon, it is German weapon or Russian weapon or any other weapon, you can use a captured weapon in this game too. Next, you can repair broken weapons. If your weapon is broken, this means flipped on, the, on this side, you may try to repair your weapon. Next, you may, you may uh, transfer your weapons. If there are two units on the same hex and uh, one of them carries a special weapon, it can transfer this weapon to another unit. Next, you can rally your units. But we don't have any broken units, so I will cover this stuff later. Also, you can deploy your units. If you have your units on the same hex with a commander, you may remove your squad and take two half squad counters instead and place them on the same hex. So, as you can see there is a lot of stuff to do in the rally phase but none of them interest us now. So let's uh, <coughs> skip rally phase for now and let's go to the prep fire phase. In the prep fire phase uh, you have two uh, options to do. First, you may uh, make your units to fire at the enemy. Each unit that fires in, in the, during the prep fire phase is marked with prep fire marker. And this means that uh, it cannot move during movement phase. But you can also make your unit uh, to do opportunity fire. What is opportunity fire? Uh, you are placing uh, the prep fire marker on, uh, sorry, you are flipping the prep fire marker on the other side where it is bounding fire and you are placing it on the unit. It does nothing during the prep fire phase, it does nothing during the movement phase, but when the advancing fire phase comes, it is allowed to fire with its all firepower. Because normally, when a unit fires during the advance f advancing fire phase, it has its firepower halved but units with opportunity fire command may fire with its full with their full firepower strength why it is useful well maybe not really in this scenario 
but uh, when you when you play a scenario with concealment when uh, some uh, enemy units are not seen then it is sometimes useful to make some movement to make enemy to uh, reveal his units and then you are le le and then in the advancing fire phase you might be allowed to fire at them more effectively but as for now we are not going to do any opportunity fire but we are going to do some prep fire of course okay where i think i will start here i'm going to make this stack fire at this german squad so let's calculate our our stuff i think i might zoom even more so everything will be <coughs> better what do we have here we have a squad a medium machine gun and a commander on this hex we have a german squad with a light machine gun so first thing first we have to check if we have a line of sight to, to, mar uh, to uh, ma mark line of sight we have to draw a line from the from this white dot on the hex where firing unit is to the same uh, uh, same uh, white uh, dot in the middle of the hex where the target is you can see that there are no uh, uh, no obstacles at all it is clear line of sight next we have checked if the if enemy is in, a, in our range fire power fire power range of this unit is four so uh, and the range uh, here is two and the range of fire of medium machine gun is 10 so yes enemy is in our fire power range so now we have <laughs> to calculate our strength our U squad has four medium machine gun has four so we have eight now let's calculate modifiers enemy is in the stone building so it is t tam plus three ne but we have a commander with minus one modifier and because of that we have plus three and minus one so it tot totally we have uh, mine we have plus two with the firepower of eight so let's go to the Sorry, I will move my stuff a bit. Let's go to the infantry fire table now and check. We have firepower of 8, so we have to roll, with, we have to get 9 or less to score a hit. If we get 10 or less, there is nothing. And we have to remember that we have plus two modifier. So let's make a roll. It is nine. And nine plus two. So it's eleven. It is a miss. Also, because uh, uh, it is eleven, you may ask if our weapon isn't, bre uh, isn't broken. Because we get eleven. No. Because you, ha you have to get natural result. And our nat natural result is nine. If we would get uh, eleven or less on the uh, on our die roll, then yes, this uh, ma medium machine gun would be broken, because its breaking number is eleven. But as for now, it is fine. But we achieved any, uh, nothing, so we have to place prep fire marker on this hex. Okay. Who's going to fire next? I think them. I have three six to eight squads here, along with this fantastic ca uh, commander with minus two and ten modifier. So I think I will use uh, the fact that I, that I have a very good modifier here, and I will try to uh, fire at this group. So. I have uh, uh, three units with uh, firepower of six and a range of two. So one, two, these Germans are in my range. There are no obstacles on the way and the Germans are in the stone building. So 
it is 18 of my, of uh, with uh, of the firepower with plus 3 stone of stone building and minus 2 because of the commander so i will have plus 1 modifier in the column of 18 no there is no 18 column this there is 16 and 20 and you are always going to the uh, closest uh, firepower uh, column but you are always rounding it, rounding it down so even if I would have 19 I would still have to use 16 column not 20 so let's make a roll oh no good uh, we have 9 plus 1 because of the modifier so it's 10 let's check 16 and the result is 10 this is normal morale check. So, each enemy unit has to perform a morale check. If, uh, if they would pass, then nothing happens. If uh, uh, they fail, then they are broken. First, always, uh, always a commander. You can see that German commander has minus one modifier, yes, but he cannot use it for himself. He can use it only for his units, but not for himself. So he, he has to make a normal morale check. And he failed! Oh, this is interesting. So he is flipped. And mark it with Desperation Morale Marker. This marker is always placed on the broken unit when it is broken. You can see it is. it says that it provides Plus, plus four negative modifier for all the uh, rally, che uh, rally checks. Okay, now for his men. Since commander was broken, uh, then this means that uh, they cannot uh, use his modifier. So let's roll for them seven. Their own morale is seven. This means that they are pinned because uh, uh, when uh, when you make a morale check and when uh, when your roll is the same as uh, your morale then you are pinned uh, what it means pinned unit ha can use only half of its firepower it cannot move and it cannot advance these last two things are not very important during the enemy uh, uh, enemy uh, phases but this half firepower might hurt okay Let's mark our Soviets with prep fire. That was that wasn't bad shooting at all. So, anyone is going to fire next? Let me see. I have these two stacks, each of them with six, uh, with three uh, units with firepower of six. So I think I will try to fire at them with these three, st th uh, three squads. So I have 18 plus three, but I don't have a commander. So I will have modifier of plus three. So this is going to be harder. <laughs> Once again, we have a column of 16. But this time we have plus 3 modifier. And we have 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. What it means? This is pin test check. So they have to make a check. If they will, uh, if they will fail, they are pinned. And they are pinned. Okay, not bad. Of course I would prefer them to be broken. But well, you never have everything you, get, you want. And this, this stack, do I want to fire? No, I will leave them alone. As for them, they cannot fire because they cannot see anyone. This building blocks our line of sight to, the, uh, to, uh, to these guys. And they have only a, a ra range of two, so, well, they can't do much. Okay, let's go on the other on, on this part of the of the board, and what I'm going to do here, my idea is to fire with um, to form a fire group. A fire group is when you fire when when you fire with uh, multiple units that are on the dif different hexes. 
you can form a fire group as long as your units are adjacent to each other. So this is a good way to uh, fire with a big number of units and do not stack them. Because like I said before, stacking in this game is not a very good idea. Uh, what is a negative side of forming a fire group? There is only one. You cannot use your commander uh, modifier because uh, you can only use a commander mod commander's modifier during the fire group if each of the unit, in, uh, each of the hex where your units are during the fire, fire group firing has the commander with the same modifier. So, for example, if there would be a commander with minus one here and no commander here, then this fire group wouldn't have any modifier. But if there would be a commander with minus one here, minus one there, and one more commander he below here and there, then I would have minus one. So you can see this is probably the only one negative side of the fire groups. Okay, I am going to form a fire group with all these four units. You can see we have one below and one above on each of these hexes, so I have total firepower of 16 here, and my target is this hex. So this commander, there is also a squad with heavy machine gun here. So I would like to <coughs> do something with this heavy machine gun. So I have 16 and plus 3 because they are in the stone building. Okay, oh. Nope, uh, 10 plus 3 is 13, nothing. So I have to mark them with prep fire markers to remember about it. That wasn't a very good shooting, but well, we managed to, to uh, break this commander, so at last we did something. And now <clears throat> the question is if I want uh, anyone else to fire. I think not. I think that's all when it comes to the prep fire phase. We can go to the uh, to the movement phase. There are various types of movement in this game, so I uh, I won't be able to cover uh, all of them in this uh, scenario, but I I will try to show you at last some. First is normal movement. It's when you are moving your unit, uh, normally spending its movement point. So I'm do what I'm going to do. I'm taking this squad, and they move here. It is wood, so they have to spend uh, one additional movement point. So uh, they they spend two movement points to enter these woods. So they have now two and two more. And but now but uh, when they are entering these woods they are in the enemy uh, sight and enemy fire uh, range of fire. So now they have to stop and now German player has to declare if he wants to fire at them or not. Of course he wants to. So I declare that I am going to do defensive fire on them. It is my defensive first fire. I am firing at them with all my strength. I have light machine gun, which has fi firepower of 3, and a squad with the firepower of 4. So my fire total firepower is 7. And now let's count modifiers. We have plus 1 because of the TAM of the woods, and minus 1 because of the modifier called... It is called, let me tell you, first fire non-assault movement. It is commonly uh, is, uh, named FF, if FFNAM, first fire non-assault movement. This modifier says that if your unit moves uh, uh, and it doesn't use non-assault, uh, it doesn't use assault movement, then the enemy gets minus one modifier. So we have plus one and minus one. So total, modifi total sum of modifiers is zero. So we are firing with seven. Let's go. So it's seven, so we will use a column of six. And no modifiers, so let's make a roll. We got nine. 
9 in the column of 6 is nothing. So we have to place first fire marker on this hex and we have to place residual fire marker. What are re residual fire markers? When you are firing during defensive fire you have to place a, a residual fire marker on the hex which was your target. A residual fire has to be a, a half of your firepower uh, used always rounding down because uh, there are no modifi fi uh, residual fire markers for everything. There are one, two, four, six, and so. Uh, there are no mo fi residual fire markers for three, for five, and so on. So when we fired with, uh, uh, with seven, we have to use a residual fire of two and place it here. Now, since uh, enemy uh, units spent two movement points to enter this hex, we can still fire at them again with, subse uh, with subsequent uh, defensive fire, or we can still fire with this German unit because uh, they are in their range and uh, they also can fire at them. Do they want to? I think yes. I think yes. They are firing at them uh, as well, so it is four plus one because of the woods, minus one because of first fire non-assault movement. So we have firepower of four with no modifiers and it is six. Wow, six, 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 the number of the beast. And yes, in this scenario, it is really a number of the beast because uh, as you probably remember, we have to check if, we, uh, if the enemy sniper is awakened because six is sniper activation number. So let's place it here. And first, you have always uh, to do sniper check first, be, be, uh, before any other actions. So let's make a roll, and it is 3. No, sniper is sleeping. So, okay, let's return. We have 6. 6 in the column of 4 is normal morale check. So Russians have to undergo uh, uh, morale check. 6! <laughs> One more check for uh, uh, one more check for sniper, and this time for German sniper. Five, he's sl still sleeping, and now six. Uh, uh, so they passed because it is small. Uh, it is less than seven, which is their morale. So we have to place first fire on this German unit, and. About residual fire? No. Because our residual fire would be 2, since we are firing with a firepower of 4, so it would be no, mo no more than uh, 2. And uh, residual fire is, n is never uh, growing up with uh, more units firing. You can always place a higher residual fire marker if uh, the unit with a stronger, uh, bigger firepower is firing. For example, if I would have to place fire, uh, residual fire, uh, residual fire uh, of 4 here, then I would remove 2 and place 4. But I, I never add. I, I can always change it. So, uh, since they spent 2 movement points, each of them might fire again. Do they want to? I think they will fire again. They, n now, they are firing, firing dur uh, b uh, during their subsequent fire. So, they have they, they can fire again but only with the half of their firepower so they are firing with uh, two with zero modifiers let's see if this will work six ha huh. again sniper oh we were soviet small sniper awakens so we have to check where what he's going to do Okay, so where? One, and how many hexes? Two. One, two. And now, who is the? Uh, uh, what is the German unit which is closest to him? This unit, that unit. They are all. They they are both in the same range. So we have to make a random selection roll. One, two, three for them. Four, five, six for them. Five. 
So our sniper goes here and he uh, and then he pins because it is small sniper so he pins enemy squad. Okay, let's return. We got six. Six in the column of four. Sorry, in the column of two because we are it was subsequent subsequent fire. Six in the column of two is pin test check. So Soviet unit has to go through the pin test check and they failed. So they are pinned. Okay. Going to place a pin marker. And we have to flip this first fire onto final fire. Now, do they want to fire as well here? I think not. I think I will let them uh, wait. May maybe some more targets will come. And since this Soviet unit is pinned, then it cannot move more. You, you, you might remember, if there is pin, it says no move. So, that's all for this Soviet squad. Let's go with the others. I will move this one next. And I'm going to do something else. I'm going to move here. It is called a special kind of movement. Uh, it is called bypass. Bypass allows you to move between the hexes and sometimes it is very good because uh, but, uh, since because of that you might use these buildings uh, woods or anything like that as a cover from the enemy fire so i'm going to move here right let's go so i am moving here through this uh, hex he uh, hex border one two three to enter this building and that's all I don't have more uh, points to enter this hex or that hex. I could move here, but it's useless for me. So I'm not moving any. Uh, I'm not moving any uh, anymore. So that's all for this unit's movement. And finally, this squad. I'm going to do something else. Uh, I know I maybe I'm not playing uh, in the most brilliant way, but, uh, since my idea is to show you uh, as many situations that might happen not how to win this scenario. What I'm going to do is to uh, try to jump from this building to this building. It is called dash and it allows you to move faster uh, or safer. They are just running like crazy from the, through this road into this building. But of course they have to move it and they are, start, they are uh, moving here onto this hex. Since they are dashing, then enemy might fire at them. So they declare they're uh, firing at them with their subsequent fire. And now, because of they are dashing, then uh, uh, enemy fire is always halved because of the dash. And, and uh, their own firepower is halved again because they are making subsequent fire. So, they have firepower of 2 because of the dash and again firepower of 1 because of the subsequent fire. So they are firing on these uh, Soviets with the firepower of 1 and now for the modifiers. First, they are not making assault movement, so we get minus 1 and then they are moving in the open ground. And this is another of the very often used modifiers which is called uh, first uh, fire movement in the open ground. When your uh, target moves in the open ground, you get a, uh, another minus one modifier. So they are firing with firepower of one with minus two modifier. This is my this, this might be hard. Let's make a roll. Oh wow, twelve. So they failed completely. It's good that they weren't using their uh, light machine gun because it would break. So yes, they failed. We have to still we, we still have to place a residual fire of one here, and they are dashing safely onto this hex. Okay, that's all for them, and now this this uh, the, uh, this uh, squad. They want to go here, 
but they have only two uh, they have only four uh, movement uh, points so they would spend one two three four is it good well I think yes it is enough one two three four why you will see later as for now that's all for them and now let's go here first thing I'm going to do is to make assault movement onto this hex assault movement means that you are uh, moving only one hex you cannot go any further but because of that and when enemy fires at you uh, he doesn't get this modifier for first uh, fire non assault movement so I am moving here with assault movement and then they are firing at them they have seven four for squad three for light machine gun and it is plus two because of the wood building and there is no modifier for uh, non -ass for assault uh, non assault movement because they are performing assault movement so they are firing with si with uh, seven with plus two modifier because of the wood building and it is five five plus two is seven in the column of six it is normal morale check so they have to perform a morale check their morale is eight and we got eight this means that they are pinned I am going to mark them with pin marker and these Germans are marked with first fire and finally since they were firing with level of firepower of seven we have to place residual fire of two okay next uh, they have to stop because they were they, uh, they are they were pinned but even so it was assault movement so they wouldn't be able to go any further next thing I'm going to do is to move this squad they are moving onto this hex as well first they have to suffer from residual fire because residual fire affects all units that are entering such a hex so they have uh, they, uh, uh, they have to take a firepower of two with a plus two because of the wood building and yes they are doing assault fire assault movement as well so it is seven plus two because of the wood building so it's nine in the column of two it is nothing so they are safe and now Germans might declare that they want to fire at them again uh, they have firepower of four they have fi first fire so it would be subsequent fire so they would have to fire with the firepower of two I think I will try to do so so I'm firing with with two and plus two because of the uh, wood building no nothing ten so they are flipped on the final fire and finally this squad it goes here as well so it has to went through the residual fire again it is five plus two so it's seven seven in the column of two it is nothing so they are fine that's good they cannot fire anymore at them because they have final fire if unit is marked with final fire it can still fire with so-called final protective fire but uh, final protective fire is very hazardous things because when you are firing uh, during the uh, final protective fire you have to, uh, to uh, treat a fire roll as your own morale check so you can see this is a uh, dangerous things also you can fire uh, with, the with the final protective fire only on, on your adjacent hexes so no nothing I would like to do here okay and any more Soviet units yes we still have this uh, stack here that might try to move and I'm thinking of using this uh, maybe some of these units to encircle and to enter this building from here this might be a risky thing but I will try to do it so I'm starting with this movement they are making a normal movement so they enter this hex they spent two movement points because this is a building and now these Germans might, might fire at them of course they are pinned so their firepower would be halved so they, they declare that they don't want to fire uh, Soviets are making one more movement here onto this hex this hex is clear terrain 
And now German uh, player declares that he wants to fire at them. His firepower is 2 because of the pin and he has minus 1 because enemy moving in the open ground and minus 1 because enemy is not using assault movement. So it's 2 and minus 2. So th there is a chance for Germans to do some damage to Soviets. 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. 5 in the column of 2 is normal morale check. Let's check it out. And Soviets passed. So we have to place uh, first fire marker here and residual fire of 1 here. And now Soviets are making uh, one more move here. Germans might, might fire at them again, but this time their firepower will be only one. Do they want to? Yes, they want. So they declare their uh, subsequent fire onto this hex. They are firing with one and minus two modifiers. Six. So we have to check if the sniper wakes up. Six. He's sleeping. So uh, we have uh, six minus two is four. Four in the column of one is normal morale check. Eight. So the Soviets are pinned. Okay, we have to place the final fire and residual fire of one here. Okay, that's uh, good. Uh, we still have two squads here. And uh, what are they going to do? I think I will make assault movement onto this hex. And now this uh, so, uh, German squad might try final protective fire. Do they want to? Yes, they want. Uh, so, they have, the, they, they have their strength uh, of uh, 1, sorry, of 2, of, uh, two uh, because of the pin. Then, uh, they have to halve their firepower because of the final protective fire, so it is 1. And then, because enemy is on the, uh, on the adjacent hexes, they have to double their strength. So they have 1 and it's doubled, so it's 2. So they are firing with the firepower of 2 and minus one because enemy in the open ground, but not because uh, of the, uh, the non-assault movement, because they are moving in the assault movement. So it's eight minus one, it is seven. Seven in the column of two is nothing, but also you have to remember it was final protective fire. So it's eight and their own morale is seven. So they are broken. This is bad. We have to also seek for place this marker here. Okay, so that was that wasn't bad at all. And I am thinking of uh, moving this unit uh, some somewhere here. But is it makes sense for me now? I think I will try. I am moving here. So I have to undergo uh, residual fire with the, with the 1 and minus 2, because I'm not making assault movement. 6. Sniper check. 2. So the ger small German sniper awakens. Sorry, Soviet sniper. Uh, because it was uh, a residual fire. So let's wait. We have to wait. And first we have to check for sniper. Where? Six. And how many hexes? Two. So he goes with six and one, two. He goes here. And now what is the uh, closest enemy unit? This stack or that stack? Let's make a, a random selection. One, two, three for them. Four, five, six for them. So sniper goes here. And he pins this squad. Okay, you can see that snipers can be really a pr trouble. Okay, and let's go. Let's return here. Uh, it was uh, 6 in the column of uh, 1 and we got minus uh, 2 because of, sorry, uh, yes, minus 2 because of the open ground and non-assault movement. So we get 4 in the column of 1, it is normal morale check. So we have to make a normal morale check for Soviets. 10. They are broken. So we have to flip them. 
and to place Desperation Morale marker. And that's all for the movement phase. Yes, and at the end of the movement phase you have to remove all the residual fire markers from the board. They are not making any use in this phase. Okay, so that's all for the movement phase. The next phase is defensive fire phase. Now, German units that are not marked with first fire or final fire might fire at the enemy units. Units uh, that are marked with uh, first fire might fire on the enemy units on the adjacent hexes. So now, do we have any, any uh, German units with uh, first fire? I believe no. No, they are pinned. This is final fire. So no, we don't have any units with first fire. We can also only fire our units with uh, that uh, uh, that have no uh, final fire and first fire markers. So so where? I think I will make a fire group with this unit, that unit, and this unit. So they have firepower of of eleven. It's 2, 4 and 7 and their, ta their target is this, uh, this squad. So they are firing at them with 11 and uh, enemy is in the stone building. So I am using a column of 8, yes I cannot use a column of 12 because it's 11 and mo uh, modifier is plus 3. I get 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 in the column of 8 is nothing. So they failed. We got first fire, sorry, final fire, final fire, and final fire. I also get, you, you can see that I get a, re, a rate of fire. So I would be able to fire again with this uh, light machine gun, but it would be, uh, well, pointless. Firing with the firepower of two, uh, of two uh, on the stone building, uh, there is still a big chance for me to wake up enemy sniper. So I don't wanna uh, to do so. And the next thing is I'm going to fire with this stack. That's why I no, I, I wasn't uh, using them for uh, my fire group because uh, if if so I wouldn't make use of this uh, commander's modifier. So I am. Firing with 5 and 4. So it is 9, minus 1 because of the commander, and my target is this squad. So I'm firing at them with 8 and, minus, and uh, plus 3 and minus 1. So it's 8 plus 2. It is 7. Plus two, it is uh, nine, so it is pin test check for Russians. Seven, they passed. So that's all. I'm not uh, ma making any more uh, defensive fire with these units here. They, well, they have this hex in their range as well, so they let them try. I have a, quite a cup, big stack here, it is four. 7, 11, 14, 18. I have 18, minus 2 and plus 3. So it is column of 16 and plus 1. Oh hell! <laughs> it is 11, plus uh, 1 it's 12, 12 in the column of 16 it is a miss. Okay, that was extremely unlucky roll. I was almost certain that I, I, I will score the hit, but, well, this happens. I think that's all. I, can, I don't have any more opportunity, opportunities to perform a defensive fire, so I am going to remove all these final fire markers from the board. because you are always removing all the first fire and final fire markers at the beginning at the end of your 
uh, defensive fire phase. Okay, that's all. And next, we have advancing fire phase. Oh, 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 I think I forgot. No, this is pin dog. Okay, that's good. Next, we have advancing fire phase. In the advancing fire phase, you can fire with uh, all the attacking uh, units that are not, not marked with prep fire. But, because it is assault, move, ass uh, assault fire phase, then uh, your uh, fire power is halved, save to the units that get opportunity fire command during the prep fire phase. We don't have any, so we have to fire normally. Where I'm going to do my uh, uh, advancing fire? I feel I, I I think I am going to do it here. I'm firing with these uh, three units here. Each of them has strength of tr uh, tr six, so they they to they have a str uh, strength of uh, six of uh, three because of the assault uh, uh, assault uh, fire. Sorry, advancing fire phase. So it is three three. And they are pinned, and because of that, they have to halve their firepower. So they have it is three, and then because of the uh, 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 pin, it is halved again to be one and half. But that's where one of the things that cost me a lot of troubles when I started when I was starting my uh, uh, advanced squad leader adventure uh, adventure. It is called assault fire. You can see that they have their uh, uh, their str their uh, let me sorry I lost my word <laughs> okay uh, you can see that they they have their firepower underlined this means that they have uh, an option uh, to perform assault fire assault fire is a special ability that allows you to fire with the higher stre bigger strength during your advancing fire phase how it works. It is a bit more complicated. Uh, you take your uh, strength and you are, uh, after all the uh, calculations, all the, modi all the modifications, you are adding one. So, they have uh, six, they have to halve it because of the advancing fire phase, so they have three, and then they have to add plus one. So they have four. And uh, when you add this one, you have to round uh, your uh, firepower to the uh, nearest number of the firepower uh, uh, column uh, uh, available. So they have four, so th there is a column of four, so no problem. Same thing with them, they also have four, so we have four, but the, here we have a different cup of tea. They have uh, one and a half, now we add plus one, so it's two and a half. And now we have to round it up to the nearest uh, column uh, allow, uh, possible. So we have to round it up to from two and a half to four. So they, each of them has four firepower, and they are targeting this hex. So they have twelve. Twelve plus three because of the stone building. And it is 10. Hmm. I think it is a miss. It is pin test check. They are already pinned, so nothing happens. We have to mark them with prep fire. They can fire as well, but you can see they are pinned. So they would be firing with 4 on this hex with plus 3 modifier. So this is not, there is not a big chance for them to score a hit, but there is a solid chance that they, they might awake enemy sniper. So I know, I'm not making any more advancing fire uh, in this uh, phase, so I am removing all these orange markers. You will soon learn that each phase has its color. For example, advancing fire phase has has an orange color because you are removing all the orange counters from the board during this phase. Okay, that's all for the advancing fire phase. Okay, a road phase. During the road phase, our units that are marked with desperation morale markers have to road. 
attacker always rolls first. So uh, in this uh, in this phase, uh, Russians have to roll first. Each of uh, unit uh, with a desperation morale morale marker, which is adjacent to the enemy unit, has to, uh, uh, has to roll. Also, uh, such unit have uh, have to roll have to roll if uh, they are not uh, in the woods or buildings. When they are in the open ground, they have to roll uh, anyway. If the, if they cannot roll, for example, they are surrounded by the enemy units and uh, each hex uh, they would enter would be adjacent to the enemy unit, they are eliminated. Because when you are roting, you cannot move closer to the uh, known enemy unit. So, let's go. Also, a uh, roting unit has six movement points. And it has to stop their uh, road in the first building or woods. So. I am starting with this uh, Russian uh, squad and they are roting onto this hex. And that's where they are going to finish their road. Next, German. We don't have any other Soviet uh, broken squads, so they are. They, uh, that's all. Now Germans. They are going to road here because uh, they have to move uh, f further from the enemy. They cannot stay on the hex adjacent to the enemy unit. And uh, there is a, Ger a German uh, broken commander here and he is going uh, to uh, stay where he is. So, that's all for the road phase. Uh, we don't have any more stuff to do. If, uh, if any, any of these units would have to move uh, on the hex in the uh, clear terrain and in the line of sight of the enemy, then they would have to undergo interdiction roll. And the interdiction roll is simply a morale check, but when you fail, then your unit suffers uh, quantity reduction. Quantity reduction means that uh, your squad is turned into half squad, your half squad is eliminated, your single man is wounded or killed. As for now, we don't have any situations like that, so that's good. That's all for the road phase for now. Of course, the, there will be probably more things about the road uh, later in the game, but as for now, we don't have much else to do. Next, we have advanced phase. Advanced phase is a phase when your units that are not pinned might move one hex. This is uh, the only phase when your units might normally enter hexes with enemy units. It is not possible during the movement, fa uh, movement phase, well, almost because there are situations when, when it is allowed, for example when your unit goes berserk, but normally you cannot enter uh, hexes with enemy units during your movement phase. You can do it only during the advance, advance phase. So let's go with our advance. Also, units uh, with pin marker cannot advance. It is, say, it is uh, written no advance on the counter. So, I am advancing here. I am advancing here, I am advancing here, remember that you can only advance one hex. They are advancing here, and I think that's all. I think that's all, I'm not um, making any more advance. So next we have a close combat phase. If we have any close combat, uh, close combat happens when there are two uh, units of the both players on one hex, but we don't have any situations like that. So at the end of the close combat phase, we are removing all the pin markers. So you can now uh, understand why uh, a close combat phase is marked with red color, because at the end of this phase, you have to remove all the red markers from the board. Uh, do we have any other? markers i believe in, oh oh we have one more pin here okay and that this concludes all the soviet actions during this turn next we have to undergo all these phases again but this time for germans so let's take a look on our turn turn track and flip this marker on the german side okay we are starting with rally phase and as you can see, we have some broken units on the board, so we can, we will have some uh, stuff to do during the rally phase. Let's start with uh, Germans. 
Uh, during the rally phase, you can rally of your all your units that have that have self rally ability. Uh, how to find that this, uh, uh, that your unit has self rally ability? It has its morale in the square on its broken side. For example, this commander has a self rally ability, so he might try to self rally. <clears throat> to rally your unit, you have to make a morale check, and uh, and now you get a plus one or sorry minus one modifier when you are in the building or in the woods. So we have minus one, and I rolled six. I add uh, plus four because of desperation morale marker, so it's ten, and I and I subtract minus one because of the uh, because of the building is it good no sadly no why because when you are making a self rally you have to add plus 1 so we have plus 1 because of the self rally minus 1 because of the building so uh, it is still zero we have plus 4 because of the desperation morale and we have 6. So it is 6 plus 4, it is 10. 10 is higher than 9, so they remain broken. And normally they would have their desperation morale marker removed. But they cannot since they are adjacent to the enemy unit. So they have to keep this desperation morale marker. And now them. Attacking player uh, this means player who has an initiative in this uh, part of the turn might try to self-rally one of his units that have no self-rally ability. For example this. But this will be very hard. You, are, you can already get, tell. We have plus 4. Uh, it is, uh, plus, uh, it is uh, minus 1 because of the building and plus 1 because of the uh, self-rally and our morale is 7. So we have to roll 3 or less. And we made it! Oh hell! Oh hell! Yes, this is 3 plus 4, it is 7. So they are. They managed to self, self rally themselves. Wow! <laughs> Miracles happened. Okay, so they are fine. And now Russians. They cannot uh, self rally. They can only rally, the, uh, rally uh, their unit. Def uh, defender can only rally his units uh, with, uh, that are broken when he has a commander on the same hex. So we cannot rally this unit, we can only remove this desperation morale. Any other stuff we have to do during the rally phase? And we have no broken uh, weapons. I have no situations when I want to uh, transfer any weapons. So I think that's all for the rally phase. We go into the prep fire phase. And now it is German time to prep fire where they are going to prep fire. I think that my biggest problem is this squad, so I'm going to fire here. Of course, this unit might be a better target because they are in the clear terrain, but they are closest, so they are more dangerous. I am forming a fire group with these two squads. So they are going to fire at them together. They are adjacent to this unit, so they have their strength doubled. So they have four, this means they are eight, and again this, they, are, they have four, so they, are, they have eight. So I, I am firing on this hex with a firepower of 16, plus three because of the stone building. Let me see if I will be able to get rid of these Soviets. Seven. Seven plus three is ten. Ten in the column of 16 is normal morale check. So let me do a normal morale check for these Soviets. They are fine, they passed, but you know what it means. Sniper activation number. So we have to roll for German sniper. We get three. Sni German sniper is sleeping, so no problem with him. Let's mark them with prep fire. Uh, who else is going to fire when it comes to Soviets? Sorry, Germans. I think them. They are going to fire here with the firepower of 7, so it's 6, plus 2 because it is wooden wood building. So it's 6 plus 2. I get 10, plus 2 is 12. 
it is a miss. The bat roll. Next. I will form another fire group here. I have 7 here and 7 here, so it will be 14, and my target is this stone build. This is stone or wood build or wood building, let me see. Yes, this is stone building. So I'm firing with uh, 14, so it is column of 12, against plus 3. Let's make a roll. It is 6 again. Russian sniper is sleeping. So it's 6, and also, if we roll the same number on, on the each, each hex, then it means that we have a covering. Uh, covering can be avoided if we, if we have a commander on the firing units, but we have no commanders, so we have a covering. Covering means that you have to uh, shift one column in the favor of the defender. So we had uh, 14, so it was column of 12, so we are moving into the column of 8. So we have 6 plus 3, so it's 9. 9 in the column of 8 is pin test check. So Soviets have to perform pin test check. Always commander goes first, so we go with commander. 7, he's fine. Now his men. We have one squad and two squad, second squad. So for the first squad, 6. <laughs> so German sniper, sleeping. And we have minus one because of the uh, commander for this uh, check, so they are fine. And the other squad, six, again, sniper, three, he's still sleeping, and six, so the Soviet uh, squads are fine. Let's mark these Germans with prep fire. Next, this uh, huge stack. They are targeting this squad and uh, they have uh, 18, so this is column of 16, and they have pl uh, plus 3 because of the stone building, and minus 2 because of the commander. So let's make a roll. We get yet another 6. So Soviet uh, sniper. We awake small Soviet sniper. Where he is? He is here. So let's check for his actions. Maybe I should shift my camera a bit. Where he goes? Three. And how many hexes? Five. So he is here. He goes here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. He can go here or there, so we have to make a, a random selection roll. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He goes here. And now we have a squad and a commander. 1, 2, 3 for the commander, 4, 5, four, five 6 for the squad. So he, he hits commander. Oh my, this is bad. So our commander is wounded. We have to mark a commander with wound marker. And uh, we have to check the severity of the wound. If 1-4 he is wounded, if 5-6 he is killed. 4-3. So he is wounded. This is not good. What it means? When he is wounded, he has 3 movement points. His uh, IPC is 0, so he cannot carry anything. His uh, morale and leadership are reduced by 1. So now he has he is no 8-1, eight, eight but instead he is 7-0. Okay, so you, you, you can already tell how annoying snipers are. Okay, let's return to our firing. So they fired at them with uh, 6 and uh, plus 1 because of the minus 2 and plus 3. So it is 7 in the column of 16. It is 2 MC. So this uh, Russian uh, stack squad must perform a morale check with plus 2 modifier. 12. Oh hell. 12 plus 2. So it's, uh, sorry, 10 plus 2. So it's 12. Uh, and now let's check for the Russian ELR. Because I feel something bad might happen. Russian ELR is 3. 
So we have to add Yeder to units morale. It is 10, 7 plus 3, it is 10. And we get 12. Because of that, uh, this unit suffers uh, quality reduction. This means that we, ha we have to take a, a squad with lower quality and replace our squad. So we have 4, four, four uh, 7 and we have to replace it with 4 to 6. Because Soviets have no second line squads. They have first line squad and they have already conscript squads. So we have to remove them and place this poor conscript squad and they are all of course broken because they fa failed their morale check. And we have to mark Germans with prep fire. Okay, who else is going to fire? I think I will fire with them onto this broken squad. So I have uh, 8 because I have 5 pl plus 4, so it's 9, so, so it is column of 8, plus 3 and minus 1. So it's 8 plus 2. Oh, it is covering, yes, but since we have a commander, so we can ignore covering. So it is 4 plus 2, so it's 6. Yes, no, yes, this is not sniper, uh, sniper activation because uh, we, we uh, can wake up enemy sniper only when we get a natural roll. So we have 6. In the column of 8, it is 1 MC. So a uh, Russian unit has to go undergo a morale check with the, uh, with the modifier of 1. And it is 6. <laughs> so let's check for enemy sniper. No, German sniper is still sleeping. And now we have 6 plus 1. Because it was plus 1, so it's 7. So they failed, because their morale is 5. And because of that, they are reduced into half squad. Let me check for the half squad. It looks like that. And it is placed here. And now we get a rate of fire, I believe, or not. I'm not sure, sorry. <laughs> I I, I'm not sure if I get a, mora a rate of fire or not. I think no. So let's forget about it. After all, I'm not using a rate of fire ability often when a sniper activation number is like that. Because uh, it is use, use, uh, useful when you are firing on the, en on the enemy who is in the open ground, who is coming at you, then it is good to use a uh, rate of fire. But well, when the enemy uh, is like that, there is no, no, nothing like that. Okay, so next thing I'm going to make this fire group. Two, four... I forgot to remove this counter and 7. So it's 11 and they are going to fire at this squad. So it's 8 plus 3. It is 8 and plus 3 is 11. So it is a miss. It is a miss. I need one more prep fire marker. Well, where do I have any? Okay, here it is. And any other German units uh, that are going to fire? I think I will try to fire with this squad on this Soviet uh, squad. They are in the woods, so I will have plus one. And let's go. 9 plus 1, it is 10. 10 in the column of 4, it is a miss. So, again, nothing. And that's all when it comes to the German uh, prep fire phase. You can see that we uh, fired with m almost all of our uh, German units. <laughs> uh, actually, Germans are defending, so that's uh, most uh, uh, what they can do. Okay, next we have a movement phase. Any German units uh, want to move? I believe no. I believe no uh, 
they are fine where they are. So we can skip movement phase and we can go right into defensive fire phase. And now Russians are going to have some uh, get, get Germans some payback. I hoped they will. So now uh, this, is, this is a defensive fire phase and Russians are going to fire. First, this, this squad, they are going to fire onto this hex. They have uh, uh, also, uh, they, uh, they have a spraying fire ability. So they might fire at each of these hex. But it would be very risky since these are stone buildings. So we, have, we would have plus three modifiers. So no, I will fire onto, onto this squad with the firepower of 12 and plus 3 because of the stone building. It is 7 plus 3, it is 10. 10 in the column of 12, it is pin test check only. So we have to make a pin test check for Germans. 6, they passed. Oh, how, <laughs> yes, uh, so the Russian sniper is sleeping. So we have to mark these Soviets with final fire. Do they want to fire at them? It would be 6 plus 3. Not a big chance, and but uh, the bigger chance to wake up enemy sniper. So no. They are firing at, at this hex. So they have 18 plus 3 minus 2. So it's column of 16 plus 1. Oh, that's a good roll. We have 4 plus 1, it is 5. 5 in the column of 16, it is 3 MC. So Germans have to undergo a morale check with plus 3 modifier. This might be hard for them. Now, first for this broken commander, let's see how he's going to do. We have 7 plus 3, so it is higher than 9. So he is wounded. We have to place a wound on him. Oh, let me check one thing. That's fine. We have to make a, a severity of the wound roll. One, he passed, so he's still alive, but he is wounded. And next, we have to make a, a morale check for this squad with plus three, yes. It is seven plus three, so it's ten. A German ELR is 4, so it is, uh, it is 7 plus 3 is 10, but German Morale is 7 plus 4, so it's 11, so they are only broken. They not, do not suffer uh, quality reduction. They are only broken, but it's still bad. And this... Uh, they are marked with... Uh, Final fire. Next, I will fire with this uh, stack here. I have 12. I have two squads and medium machine gun, so I have 12 plus 3 and minus 1. So it's uh, 12 uh, plus 1. Oh wow! I rolled, um, this time it was amazing roll. Of course, it, it might be a covering. But again, I have a commander here. So commander allows me to ignore covering. So it's 12, it is 2, plus 1, so it's 3. 3 in the column of 12 is K3. K3 means that unit suffers a quantity reduction, so it is reduced into half squad because it was squad. And now, when it is half squad, it has to undergo a morale check with the three modifier of 3. Oh, that was, that was an extremely unlucky roll. So, it is 12 plus 3, so it's 15. So yes, this is definitely higher than units morale and units ELR plus morale. So they, ha they are uh, broken and they have to suffer quality reduction as well. This means that we have to replace them with a unit of the lower quality. This means second line half squad. They are go out. This half squad goes here. They are broken.
and that's good. Russians are marked with final five. Next thing that Germans are, that Russians are going to do is to fire with these three squads here. They have 18 plus 3. It is 6, so German sniper, 4, so he's sleeping. And now, 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 in the column of 12 is normal morale check. So Germans have to undergo a morale check. 5, so they are fine. Who's going to fire next on the Soviet side? I think them. So they have 4, they have 12, uh, they have 4 and 4 again, so it is 12, and they have 4, so it is 16. They are firing here. So it's 16 plus 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 in the column of 16 is 1 MC. So it's 1 morale, morale check with plus 1 modifier. So first this commander... He failed! Oh my, that's bad. So he is broken. And now for his men, 7 plus 1, so it's 8. So, they are broken as well. No good. Uh, I need one more de desperation morale marker. Okay. That was extremely, extremely unlucky situation for uh, Germans. And Soviets get some good rolls, finally. And I think that's all. Hmm, let me think. I still have this group here. But the problem is that they have, uh, they have no enemy in their range. Uh, they might fire here or there. No, they cannot because there is a, this uh, corner blocks their line of sight. But firing here would make them half their firepower. So they would have 3, 3 and 3, so it is 9. Does it make sense to fire here with 9 and, and plus 3 because of the stone building? I think I will try. This might be risky, but let me try. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. So, German sniper. Oh, at last, at last he's sleeping. So I have 6 plus 3, so it's 9, so it's pin test check. And since these units are already broken, then nothing happens. Okay, that's all, so we can remove uh, all the defensive fire markers from the board. And uh, next we go to the advancing fire phase. We don't have much, uh, much stuff to do here either, because uh, all the German units are marked with prep fire, so they cannot uh, make advancing fire at all. So all we can do is to remove these prep fire markers from the board. And go right to the road phase. And now the situation might be problematic. Uh, first, uh, first are Germans because these are the, the, this is the, their time to shine, so they are uh, rotating first. And this stack has to rot. The, uh, these two units are broken and they are adjacent to the enemy unit, so they are moving here, so, or maybe not, maybe here. And the enemy unit might see them. I believe not. I believe not. This building blocks the line of sight for them and for them. But as for them, I am not sure. Let me see. I believe they can see them. Yes, I believe they can see them. So we have to make interdiction roll for 
this uh, unit. First for the commander, four he passed, then for the unit, ten they failed. If, if they failed, they suffer uh, quality, uh, quantity reduction. So we turn squat into half squat. This is how interdiction works. And now they continue the road, the, the road here. Now them. I'm going to make a road. One, two, three, four here. Because this commander will would allow me to rally my unit faster. Next, that's all for Germans. Now for uh, no, not for Germans. That's not all for Germans. They they are going to retreat here, so they will be out of enemy fire range. Now the, them, they are moving down one level, and now they are moving onto this hex because there is a commissar here, so he might help them to rally themselves. And I think that's all for the rally phase. Sorry, road phase. Yes, that's all for the road phase. Next we have advanced phase. And what Germans are going to do? I can move here, but it wouldn't be good. They, are, they have a strength of 6, my strength is 4, so this, this, uh, this wouldn't be good for uh, Germans, so I'm not moving uh, here. I will move this commander here. So he will be able to provide his uh, leadership on the fire to, uh, uh, to make these units all right. And I think that's all when it comes to the German advancing fire phase. Uh, sorry, uh, advanced phase. We have no close combat. No, we don't have any close combat. So this concludes turn one. Uh, it was quite long, I know, but I tried uh, to uh, tell about everything uh, at, uh, in details, so the next turns I think will be uh, much faster. As for today, I think that's all. Thank you for watching and see you again.